Now, David Cameron is back from his two-day whistle-stop tour of Europe. It all turned into a bit of a gastronomic odyssey. Culinary delights such as lobster terrine, smoked trout and veal escalop amongst the dishes that were laid before the Prime Minister in the four capitals he visited. I'm feeling hungry already. But did he achieve anything in his renegotiations of Britain's membership of the EU? Well, this morning, the chairman of the German Parliament's Committee on Foreign Affairs was in London. I caught up with Dr Norbert Röttgen at the German Embassy and asked him what he made of David Cameron's grand European tour. The Europeans, the 27 member states, are presented the wishes for reforms and we know that there will be a referendum in Great Britain. Uh, everybody wants to keep Britain as a member of the European Union and, and now we are waiting what are the proposals uh, which are the wishes for reform so we want we are strongly determined to keep Britain inside uh, and we want to do everything what is possible to make that happen. So you're not yet clear precisely what David Cameron is asking for? I would say the, the proposals are to up to now not really concrete. There is some talk about immigration and about treaty change and all of this. I think we, it, it's, we have to know what, what is really on the table and we can discuss about. The general view is that uh, Europe uh, is facing several crises, external crises from Ukraine, Russia, ISIS uh, and, and the general perception is that a Brexit would cause nothing but losers. Great Britain would lose, Germany would lose, the European Union and in Washington, P Beijing and, and nowhere is understanding for weakening the European Union. This is the basic understanding but of course we have to discuss if there is a wish for discussion. But this debate in Britain is not a priority for you at the moment. We are concerned of course. I think we are, we are, in a, we are facing a watershed uh, uh, with regard to the relation of Europe to, to our entire environment. The global, the global situation is in disorder. We are facing severe threats and uh, within Europe we have a lot of problems. We have not the strongest times of European integration and so uh, a debate uh, which, which forces us to deal with ourselves instead of addressing challenges does not strengthen the Europeans and so uh, we, we, haven't, we would not wish this problem, but we have to deal with it. Angela Merkel has said where there's a will, and you yourself have said you very much want Britain to stay within the EU, so it sounds like you'll go quite a long way to meet David Cameron's demands. It means first and foremost that we want the European Union to stay a united a political actor. Uh, we want to have Greece inside, even Greece, which causes troubles, and we want to have such a strong country like Great Britain inside. So you can put it a bit ne more negative. There is fundamentally little understanding for facing the challenge and the question of leaving the European Union. Yes, we are ready to do everything what is possible but the question is what are the wishes, what are the reforms and what is feasible to be done. Well let's look at some of the demands that we do know about. EU migrants to live here and contribute to the economy for four years before they can claim tax credits and child benefit. EU migrants won't be considered for a council house until they've lived in an area for at least four years. Are those achievable? Yes, we have looked at these problems and the, the, the decisive question is uh, do proposals include and imply a discrimination against workers from other EU countries? If there would be a discrimination against uh, citizens of other EU member states, it would clearly uh, not comply uh, with fundamental rules, the liberty of freedom of workers and I would say there is no chance of approval of such uh, a violation of a fundamental principle. The liberty of movement of workers is at the core and the heart of the European project and if it, is, if it does not imply uh, uh, discrimination against others uh, and other European workers, it is possible and feasible already today. So the question is what is really the feasible 
uh, and the, the new uh, substance of the proposals. As it stands at the moment, are those things achievable without treaty change? Everything which, which works without discrimination against workers of other EU member states is possible under the current uh, legislation. Because treaty change, in your mind, is not going to be possible, is it, within two years? Treaty change, the, the Chancellor said form follows contents, so let's talk about the contents. But when it comes to the form, you have to be clear that treaty change is a huge political venture. And for this, you need a kind of, of consensus and momentum. And it is, it is hard to imagine that a community of 28 can run by, by, by when, when one member says, well, now we want to have treaty change, and this starts the whole machinery of referendum of 28 national parliaments which have to approve, approve uh, uh, the, the treaty changes. So you have to have a kind of momentum and consensus about the necessity and the contents of treaty change. So I would say, and I would predict, within the course of two years, treaty change, to achieve treaty change, is unrealistic. Would it be better in your mind if the UK held this referendum before the end of 2017? I think everybody has to accept the debate and the timetable within the country who wants to have changes. We would prefer the earlier the better, but if you start such a debate it needs time. And so we accept the timetable which is worked out in Great Britain. Thank you. Thank you.